Hello, welcome back to the ministry, and this is Tajma Cameron, and today I'm just flowing. Um, I wanted to record this video a few days ago, but I didn't get time to sit down and really just work on it the way that I desired. Um, so this is kind of like a social media flow, and I wanted to talk to you more about where I came from with social media. Um, about three or four days ago, I sat down and I watched a film on my um, tablet about social media. And I sit here and I kind of wanted to talk about that. For me, I have to go back to the beginning. I've never been a social media person. When Facebook first came out, I didn't get an account until 2005. When Facebook only let people on that were in college. And it had to have been after 2005 because... Was it after 2005? Because I didn't... I wasn't in college yet then. I didn't go to college till 2006. But, um, I started out as a fiction writer. I used to write fiction. You've heard me talk about the TV show that I liked to watch when I was a teenager. As a matter of fact, the last video I did, I talked. The Lord gave me a word in relation to or through watching that show. Um, and I used to write fiction. I wrote over 280 pieces of fiction in relation to that one topic. Uh, and then and that was over a three, four, five year period. I stopped writing. I was in college. I was doing other things. I was making websites and doing other online things, things I've been doing for years. Uh, I became a fashion blogger after I came out of college because that's what I did when I was in college. I was into fashion and I found myself in a state where I was going through a season of transition. I came out of college and I didn't know what to do with myself. So I started a fashion blog. But over time, you come to the realization if that's not what God wants from you, he won't allow you to do it but for so long. And I hadn't given my life to God at that particular point. It wasn't until 2014 I gave my life to God. And during that time frame, I was writing a lot of fiction because I'd went through a distressful season between 2012 and 2014 and I started writing. Writing was my escape so I did a lot of writing fiction during that season. I may have written anywhere from 14 to 20 pieces in another genre of fiction and why do I even talk about this? During that time frame, I was posting my content on a platform. Similar to a lot of these platforms that you see today, the platform I was writing on, you had a lot of engagement, but you also had online, somewhat what you would call bullying there. And I remember my er, that was my earliest experience with... Um, uh, running into people that didn't like my opinion on other things. Meaning somebody else would write something and I would share my opinion and they would have, they would go into their trolling, commenting, this, that, and the other. Like, you shared your opinion, we don't care. And... I remember I used to actually end up in debates with some of these people. And why am I even saying this? When, I, when you're young, you really don't have um, 
and understanding of, okay, should I or should I not be engaging in this conversation or not? Um, but in that season, I feel like it prepared me to a degree to be able to be on social media anyway. Um, there were fan groups in relation to the genre that I was writing in and I ended up, some of the people had even turned on me in relation to some of the stuff that I was writing and some people, they were for me some days and then they were against me another day and it was just... I had my group of people. By the time I stopped writing the fiction that I was writing on those pages, I had over 10,000 views on what it was that I was writing on. But I also wasn't walking with God at that time. I hadn't come into the fruition of my understanding and my walk with the Lord. So, if as a Christian blogger, writer, content creator, so on, I had, if I had that amount of views now, because last time I checked where I was writing before, I was close to almost 11,000 views on what I was writing back then. If I had that now in my Christian content, oh, people would be following me automatically. It's like, oh, she got 10,000, 11,000 views. She must have something she had to say. I'm not pressed about that. I wasn't pressed back then about having a 10,000 views. I just ended up getting 10,000 views at that time because people enjoy what I was writing about. And I was the type of person that I would comment but I've always noticed, even when I um, was writing back then, I had a handful of people. And it was the handful of people was the reason that I used to write. For that one comment. The one person that came back to me every day and said, man, that chapter was awesome. I can't wait to read the next chapter. And I would write that next chapter for that person. Some of those stories may have never, ever gotten finished had I not had that one person still saying, Man, I can't wait for the next chapter. I remember I finished a story that was 30 chapters in 30 days, and I would spend all night writing just to make sure I could get that chapter up so that person could read it the next day. For the one person that was reading my stuff at the time. So now as a Christian content creator... And I got 300 views over here, 40 views on this channel, some stuff on my uh, Instagram pages. But I'm not pressed about that. There are some people that are clouding having hundreds of thousands and wanting millions of viewers and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm like, why do you want it though? For what? To be able to wear the merit badge of social media's respectability for having had that amount of viewership and follower? Or do you want it because you're actually impacting that amount of people? Because see, social media is very it's a word I'm looking for not bloated but it's an inauthentic place and for one the algorithm changes every three to six months so because social media's algorithm on each platform changes every three to six months and if you are a person such as myself that either follows um, entrepreneurial pages or is in content creation and entrepreneurship you have the understanding of the fact that these algorithms shift because there are certain content creators especially when you're creating challenges and things that are going to make you money on these platforms 
if you're not paying the platform, they kind of try to play a, what do you call it? You know the cup game where they bait and switch, bait and switch, bait and switch the cups around? That's what they knew with the algorithm. So it, it, it makes it hard for a person that may have started on social media and was making hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook or figured out how to make memberships on or something on these other platforms. People now are trying to make money on TikTok. I saw an ad on my tablet the other day while I was playing a game. And these algorithms are shifting around to not make it as easy for you to gain access without paying the system because Facebook you have to pay Facebook for Facebook ads but if you try to go around Facebook to create an ad and that's a whole long long drawn out story on how Facebook will look for con look for words being typed on your images to block you from gaining access to people I literally how do I know this because I have a mentor that is in social media and when she posts too many links they block it as spam on her page <laughs> and it's a scenario of you end up playing this tiring game with the system and you have to literally sit there and ask yourself the question is it worth playing the game why are we doing this and what is your what is the real reason as to why you wanted to do this are you here to play this game and a lot of people will say if you're not willing to play the game you're not going to get anywhere or are you here for the few the word talks about the fact that um, the harvest is plenty, but the workers shall be few. Would you rather sit and speak the truth of what God wants you to speak in whatever arena, career, field, whatever it is that the Lord is telling you that you, you're supposed to go into and have a handful of people that are actually interested in what you have to say? Or would you rather have 150 million people following you and 100 million are just there just because you pass them on social media. So they saw your video. Oh, I like this. Let me follow this person. But they actually don't care about the content that you're talking about. Then you have that other follower that's, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further and I'm going to click and I'm going to watch one of their videos. But I ain't never going to like, share, or subscribe to anything that they have to say. But I'm, I'm going to just linger around here. Then you have the one that is willing at least to press the subscribe button. And then after you've done all that, add on the algorithm suppression, which means if you got the 150 million followers, guess what? The algorithm suppression is going to only give you access to about anywhere from 10% to 2%, depending on how high your ranking and amount of followers are at any given time. Now, some people say, oh, followers are just the vanity metric. It's only vanity if the only reason that you care about it is to have followers. That's vanity. Are you seeking followers because you actually want to reach direct people that are interested in what it is you have? to say I've always been that type of person that if I have enough of a communication with you I've called people that followed me before 
I will physically call them. I would sit and have messenger chats with them. Do a completely free consultation with them. It helped me in my ability to do consultations as a coach and so on and so forth. And yes, I do do coaching. I don't do it often because I'm still trying to find my rhythm. So what did I say all that to say? I sat down and I watched that film. It was called Public Figure. And they showed you six different types of public figure and the way that social media has impacted them societal wise. Now me, I'm always thinking beyond what I'm seeing. So I look at the big picture. Most people will sit and they will look at the entire tree or look at the leaves. Uh, currently, right now, there's something that is very politically uh, in the headlines, and a lot of people are paying attention to the leaves, and I'm paying attention to the roots. Because they're distracting you with leaves and twigs, and I'm looking at the root of where that came from. That's the way I do with a lot of things. I actually took a gifts test the other day because my mentor suggested it. And one of my gifts is discernment. I can discern things very easily. I don't care what I'm looking at, whether it's political or whether it's social. That's why half the time I don't even want to be on these social media platforms if I'm 100% honest. I was sitting listening to um, Tiffany Montgomery yesterday and she made a point of saying, you gotta be very careful that when you have influence how you're using it, how you're suggesting, who you're suggesting. Because especially when you have a high level of influence, and she made the point of saying this, she had 200, two, she had 2.8 million, um, don't make me lie, 2.8 thousand viewers on that one video that she was live in. I got 2.8 million because it was a, a food bloggers video I was looking at the other day and they had 2.8 million views on their video so I got the two numbers uh, mixed up but she had 2.8 thousand people live in her video and she was talking about something that actually was detrimental that she had purchased and figured out later was an issue and she would not name the person or the product she was talking about and she said this is this is influence 101 if you have influence why would you take the person that had done something that was not a positive impact and actually was detrimental say the name and give that person ability to gain traction because now the 2.8 thousand people that were listening to her in that moment out of just sheer curiosity are going to look up the name which thereby gives her search rank, whoever it was, it would have given that person who actually was selling a product that was damaging social clout. Because now, just out of curiosity, everyone went and looked for it. So, as a person that is on social media, I'm not pressed about viewership. 
I got 40 people subscribed to me. Bless be the Jesus. If they still follow me, great. I may have followers following me that I that are not subscribed because you know you can follow a person and view their stuff and never subscribe to them. So getting back to what ha was happening in the movie, they had this one socialite black female. They had a um, another socialite, which was for the LGBTQ. They had a celebrity. They had a black person, or shall I say a black male. They had, and two white men. Two, two other white men one was a fitness trainer and the other one did something oh they were a photographer and they were talking about their influence and I looked at all of their numbers at the end of the film and I'm like they have influence but none of them had hit a million followers matter of fact actually the black person lost the black male lost followers a huge chunk of followers. And I could sit up there and talk about the viewer, the the view of each individual person. Socially, socio socially and socioeconomically. Because like I said. People will talk about the leaves and the twigs, but I look at the root of the situation because I have high discernment, even in the way that that film was structured. Who got more time on screen in comparison to the other person? What uh, footage was being pushed more so than the rest of the footage? what viewpoint the black man was getting in comparison to the LGBTQ person. What viewpoint the black female was getting in, compa in comparison to the woman that came off The Bachelor in their screen time. And what were they getting attention for? What were they standing for? What was their platform? Because you have to understand something that social media is social, but the powers that be that run these companies, they make the determination on what's going to become trending. Notice that you don't see Christian content become popular and if it is becoming popular, you gotta read between the lines as to who is becoming popular and what they're speaking. Because the system is only going to churn out something that supports its system. This is why I don't like social media. I'm not chasing a follower. I'm not trying to sit there and get frustrated because of my reach. I have several Instagram pages. I got about six, each one for something different business wise. And I look at my reach and I look at, at this particular point, I'm not even trying to gain followers. If I sat here and tried to play the wheel of social media, and when I say play the wheel, I'm talking about Try to get follow followers, work on the algorithm, because there's only about two ways you can get followers when you look at it. They all stem back to these two ways. It's either organic followers, 
or its paid followers, or a combination of the two on social social media. Okay. Now, I believe it's Twitter and Instagram both got in a whole lot of trouble for. Remember when they had fo- uh, it wasn't follow back. It was the people that would come into people's posts and troll, telling you you can buy followers. That actually got celebrities in trouble because there, <laughs> they had um, what you gonna call it, uh, Instagram brand social media strategists purchasing followers for them. So when Instagram would do a six month to a year clean out of accounts, celebrities who sat up there and showed uh, that they had millions of followers were dropping down by hundreds of thousands of people because whoever was operating their influence team had bought followers. That's a vanity metric. People are trying to out play the system and the algorithm for what then you have to look at for those that are in entrepreneurship and using social media to gain traction for their uh products services um coaching a lot of people do coaching programs uh whether it be coaching services or they're doing challenges and funnels for products and or services on social media and being able to play the rat race game of being able to get your content in front of the right people and then once you got the people clicking on your content that they will come in and follow what it is that you have to say and go past the point of not only just watching your content, but actually purchasing through a funnel what it is that you have. And then how are you maintaining that after you have uh, created that? Meaning you may get 20 people to in a successful challenge and people purchase your content, but how do you continually maintain that impact cycle after cycle and are you going to keep following that cycle to maintain your income revenue you understand what I'm saying and then what's your price ranges and are you going a lot of people are throwing out hot ticket services everybody wants to sell services for the same information that they were selling at a hundred dollars they want to sell the exact same information for now ten thousand dollars or They want to create an entire experience for $100,000. And it's that element of while still building these things through challenges on social media. You see it if you're on social media. You done got about 15 ads for it. I guarantee you. You done did it. So what am I saying? I sit here on these platforms I made a video on my Instagram for the channel that I do my um, other podcast on. And I said that I don't even know if I want to keep posting on Instagram no more. I do post, but I don't make it. Let me make sure that I post three posts a day and do what they say that you're supposed to do every single day to make sure that I'm getting. No, I'm not doing all that. I'm not doing all that because I'm trying to figure out what's my purpose for doing that in the first place right now. Am I chasing followers? Am I trying to gain attention for something that I'm and why why do why would I need to feel like I need to do that? Am I chasing followers? Am I chasing clients? Am I chasing money? What am I chasing? I'm not chasing nothing. I'm not. Because the system tells you that you're supposed to get organic traction and 
build up your follower base until you, but why are you doing that? For what? To be able to have the follower base or to be able to impact a certain set of people? Because anybody can get a follower base if that's what you're desiring to get. Follow the, the traction things, but there's a lot of work to be doing to just have people have eyeballs on what your stuff is but aren't willing to purchase into it. And then those people are frustrated when people aren't purchasing, but you upgraded your rates from hundreds to thousands to hundreds of thousands. Why are you doing it? What's your heart posture when you don't get the result that you want? Want it? It's a scripture that talks about that you need to have a love for the Lord, whether a base or a mound. God makes us a steward of little, and then He will give us much. But He never said that we needed to chase much for it's God that makes us exceedingly abundantly and gives us exceedingly abundantly greater than we could ask or think you make God the center and he will make you everything else it never says in the word that you won't make yourself publicly popular it says you will be known for what you do in private, God will make public. And it's not because you chased to make yourself public. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, what you see right here of me speaking to you is just me seeing me speaking to myself. But I'm talking to you. And if my words impact you, may that bus be to Jesus. But I ain't out here chasing fandom. I'm not chasing anything. There's a, a, a challenge I was imparted to or had done a while ago called Live, Serve, Grow. And it was about operating from a place of ease. And that's where I want to work. I don't want to have to fight, stress, hustle to have to do all these things. God never said that we had to hustle. I'm seeking for ease, and that's what I'm desiring. And playing this social media game, it's not worth it. So, this is my float for today. I hope you understand me. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on social media. I'll be here as long as I need to be here. But it is what it is. God makes that decision. So for LFPB Ministries, this is Taj McCameron.